It's Ultra 10 RAM upgrade time. Now, you may be wondering what this stick of RAM is. This is a double height, 256 meg, um, 8K buffer, ECC stick of 60 nanosecond EDO. This is only supported in the Ultra 10, not the Ultra 5. It's IBM branded RAM, interestingly enough, and the date code on the main chip there is 9902. The other one says 9704. Excuse me, I had a, got a little bit of a runny nose because of, uh, well, it's raining outside. Um, okay, so I didn't just get one stick. I got two sticks. Let's take a look here. This is the inside of the Ultra 10 as it stands right now. Let's take a look at the sticker here. It is a 256 meg stick. 32MX72. Assembled in Italy. And the other one. Assembled in Italy. So you're not 60 nanosecond, 50 nanosecond. Look at that. So this is the fastest type of RAM that you can pop into the Ultra 10. Um, this is also the highest density RAM stick you can pop in. It has to look like this. It can't look like the one with the T. Or else you're going to have problems. It's only going to see half the RAM because of the way that the chips are stacked. Addressing wise or something. It has something to do with the cache chips and uh, not the cache chips, the ECC chips and how the chips are laid out. Um, there's a good informational forum about that over on the Nekochan IRC, uh, IRC channel, what the fuck am I saying? Uh, Nekochan forums. I will link that down below for those of you that stumble across this video looking to do this upgrade yourself. Um, other things that have happened since this entire last video I made about this have gone down. I added a fan there that actually helps really well. And I've added some spacers out of some old plastic keyboard parts from dead MacBook works really well. Um, there's a fan back there, which is a little 60 millimeter 12 volt fan. Uh, it does rather okay. And I popped a different power supply in and added a fan there. It seems to do okay. It seems to. The hard drives are staying rather cool, at least the one hard drive now. And I put the DVD burner back in. However, I'm thinking about taking this back out or replacing this 250 gig with something else. Um, everything else is now wired up so that the power supply is giving direct power on a 5 volt reel to most of these fans. And the system stays rather cool. Um, that's still the same, pretty much. Um, there's not much else that's happened. I tried putting in this PC card... Uh, adapt, uh, well, PCI card, PC card, PCI card adapter thing. And although the usual normal Linux kernel has drivers and stuff for this, the Spark 64 kernel on Debian Wheezy does not. So that's going to be going down the toilet and I'm going to be popping something else in as I can see fit. Um, I don't know what this is going to be yet. Because I already do have USB. I don't really have a need for FireWire anymore, I don't think. And I'm currently figuring out, well, what else I can drop in that's interesting enough to leave in there and use once in a while. I can drop in a Sound Blaster Live 24-bit if I so chose to. Not my kind of, uh, well, not my bag of chips, to be honest since I'm not going to be using this uh, with a monitor. This is still a headless platform for me. There's a couple of other different weird PCI cards I have around. I'll, I'll find something to fill in that gap, and if not, I'll probably just put a spacer there and say, forget it. So, yep, yeah, just uh, way too... Uh... Ooh, there's a yawn. Excuse me. Just wanted to make a video about this, and uh, here is the before picture. There it is after. 
you can sort of see why they only say that you should be doing this in the Ultra 10 and not the Ultra 5. Suffice it to say, these RAM sticks are quite a bit bigger. There's the, the top of the bottom one, the, the two 128 sticks still in there. And there's the top of the five, the two 256 sticks right in there. You can sort of see the difference. Not so much because of the lighting, but you kind of get it. You kind of get the point. Am I right? I'm right. I, I know I've got to be right. Let's go from above. They, they stick out quite a bit. That That's pretty much what it is. So, next time I get some money into my hands, I'm going to be doing uh, the replacement of those other two sticks. And this machine will have a full gig. Now, I do have to boot this up with a screen attached and actually double check that I am getting the full 768 megabytes that this machine now has. Um, I think that's about it. So, without further ado, I'm going to put the case back on and I'm going to end this video. Well, not in that order. I'm going to do it the other way around. I'm going to end the video and then put the case back on and get everything back to together the way it was. Um, something else I'm going to do before I do that is there's the NVRAM chip. If I take this out here, there's the NVRAM chip. Yay, NVRAM! I'll place my phone down here for a moment and uh, knock it out of the uh, holder here. Ooh, it's fully potted. Oh boy. Gee, I sure do love that. Ooh. That's going to be fun. Uh, there's enough space there. I could probably get away with a CR2032 on top. Okay. Final project before I put this back together. I almost forgot. So there's the NVRAM chip. This one is a fully potted one. And I recently did the uh, upgrade... Well, not the upgrade, but the replacement of the battery for a Spark Station 10's NVRAM chip. So, I am now in the, uh, well, I'm in the uh, market for a replacement NVRAM battery for this one. Now, the way you're supposed to do this is, there's pin 1 on the bottom left, you can tell by the dot. You're supposed to go on the side opposite of pin 1, so opposite the, the, uh, the dimple, this side. And with the uh, two-piece NVRAM chips, you're supposed to, uh, you're, you're supposed to like, really grind at that piece right there, detach the old battery, and solder new thing wires onto the battery terminals for a new coin cell or new alkaline cells, whatever you choose to do. Um... This one, you can see it's fully potted. So what I've been re uh, recommended to do is to just take a Dremel to this. And get to the contact in here instead. Um, that's something that I may actually go and do after I take this sticker off and scotch tape it to the inside of the case here so I don't lose those numbers. Or I'll probably just... Uh, sharpie that in some place that way i don't lose them because that's a that this this is like the identifier number you, you have that you can calculate the entire identifier number and uh ethernet address of this particular machine so since i have that particular number right there that's going to be very very easy to make this happen and do so I'm going to get to doing that out in the garage because that's where my Dremel is. I have to go get my tools from down here in the basement and bring those out there, including some, uh, well, I'm going to have to cut into this, so a cutting disc. And uh, we're going to have some fun. So, end the video here. And hopefully I cut back in right about here where I'm done with the upgrade. Done. Looks like shit. and looks like someone got icing all over it but I used what I had available.
I had uh, some hot glue gun sticks that were actually some sort of Sears branded caulking. So I just kind of melted that down with a lighter and, uh, well, this is the result. The battery is from something, I'm going to guess an IBM of some kind, and I kind of accidentally took off the heat shrinking, so I had to caulk the battery on both sides, that's okay. Um, I caulk glued it down. I have not completely glued it down, so if I wanted to enough, I could probably uh, detach it from there, but for now, this will do for testing. Um, I got in all the way, I was able to get these soldered on okay, so now it's just a matter of testing it and seeing what happens. Um, yeah, that's it. Be back in a bit, maybe. The finished product installed. Let's see what happens. It's showtime. And here I am. Computer. Power. Power. Oh my god, my desk is still a mess. And of course I put the uh, NVRAM information on here along with the uh, replacement battery stuff that I had to do at an angle because of well, PCI cards. So, <clears throat> without further ado. Now I've already gone in and uh, reset the NVRAM parameters. So, this should be a good test of whether or not it held its charge. Yep. We good. We very good. The RAM, however, did not work. It's only showing up as 128 meg sticks, so the RAM is not going to work for me for this. However, I will keep it off to the side because I do think that I can use it for something else. So, <coughs> we are not at a total loss. Now, Canalyx is going to start. Got the frame buffer. Oh, oh, system D. Oh. Oh. Yuck. And we are up. All nice and happy. And as quickly as we can start up, we can quickly shut down. Slides too. <coughs> Same D disabled. Edit. Okay, I'm gonna have to look into that. And we're done. One hundred percent done. So that concludes this video. Hopefully, someone got some sort of information out of it and uh I'm not, i didn't just do this for my own uh no my own amusement and uh that's about it and with that i'll see you next time or you'll see me next time or not <laughs>